What's up guys, Ben Melikin here back for Carl's Mystery Tackle Box. You know, it's spring here in the Midwest and that has me thinking about one bait primarily and that is the old jerk bait. When the water comes off of our lakes, it's super, super cold. A lot of times it's clean. This is the absolute best bait you can throw to get more bites, whether you're bank fishing, boat fishing, everything in between. Um, so obviously in today's video, we're gonna talk about jerk bait fishing. We're gonna talk about everything there is to know about throwing a jerk bait to catch largemouth, smallmouth, spotted bass. Um, wherever you are in the United States, these are tips you can use. We'll talk about where to throw it, when to throw it, the tackle to throw it on, uh, when you should throw a bait that looks like this, as compared to when to throw a bait that looks like this. We got all different types of things. You're not gonna wanna miss this one, let's go. This lake and this bank right here, to me, are absolutely perfect because we got several things going on. We got the wind blowing in, we got clean water, it's a steep bank. We want that steep drop off because those fish are gonna sit right on the edge of the drop off and they're gonna be able to ambush right off of that. You know, the, the water's really, really cold. 46 degrees here in the Midwest. It's super, super cold still, but it's warming up quickly. And with the sun out, the wind blowing in, everything that's going on, those fish like to get right up on that drop off uh, and a lot of times they'll even slide up into that five or six foot range to feed. I'm sitting in the boat right now in about 15 feet of water. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the boat, the, the wind kind of just push the boat down the bank, use the trolling motor to keep myself off in a little ways. And I'm gonna make, I'm not gonna say parallel cast, and I'm definitely not gonna 45 degree angle or perpendicular. Let's call it a 30 degree angle, angle cast that's gonna start the bait up in like three or four or five feet of water. And we're gonna work it all the way down to where the boat's at almost in like 12, 15, 16 feet of water. Boat positioning is absolutely critical whenever you're fishing a jerk bait. I like to keep the boat in a position to where I'm casting with the wind if at all possible. You know, a lot of times if, if you're on a really, really good spot, a lot of times the wind's blown into your face and you sit in one spot, you do need to spot lock if that happens or, or hold it there with your trolling motor with your foot, obviously. Um, and sit and cast into the wind. But like on a day like today, where I'm trying to cover water and I'm fishing a bait that I'm fishing extremely slow, I wanna sit here and really let this wind work in our favor. We can make long bomb casts, it's clean water, so we wanna stay back off away from the fish. Just had one hitter right there, look at that. Might catch some today. Now, if I had to pick a cadence, and really it's a cadence that I have confidence in, and really you should be just be doing whatever you have confidence in when it comes to your pauses and your cadence, I like to cast it out, reel that jerk bait down a few feet, and then I'll just go one, two, one. And then I'll let that bait sit. I'll go 1,001, two, three, four, five, six, jerk, jerk, jerk. One, two, three, four, five, six and then i'll just repeat that over and over the big thing with with fishing the jerk bait is you don't want your line to be super super tight because when you jerk it it's going to just blow out uh yeah that was interesting but anyway so when, when you're when you're pulling your bait you don't want it to be too tight because when you jerk the, the bait it's going to really blow out and it's it's not going to give it the proper action you always want to jerk the bait on a slack line but you don't want your line to be over there the wind's blowing that way you don't want it to be way over there you want it to be a semi-slack line, just enough that there's a little bow in your line like that, and you're always twitching the slack in it. That way when the fish bites, you, you, you always have to be a line watcher when you're jerkbait fishing. When that fish bites, your line's gonna jump, or it's gonna tighten up, or it's just gonna go to the side. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science, but you always gotta watch your line, because as soon as you hit that a lot of times and you twitch it, that fish is gonna be there, and you have to pick up line and get ready to go. Now when conditions are tough, or when the water's super, super ultra clear, I like to do a very important thing, and that is downsize. I like this Catch Co Hunch. It's got a nice tall profile, just like a lot of the gizzard and threadfin shad have. Um, so this works really, really well in shad-based lakes. But it also has that hunchback, just like they do with like, you know, bluegill, crappie, panfish, stuff like that, which is what a lot of the bass around here eat too. This bait right here, just as effective as a bigger one, but when it's tough conditions, a lot of, uh, a lot of really clean water, this guy can be even more effective. Oh, okay, that guy freaking jumped it. Damn, that feels like a heavy fish too. That or he's got it sideways. Tough to tell what I'm fishing out here, guys, but there's a hump that comes up right out here. It's got some grass on I bet this is a smallmouth the way he's pulling. Yep, we had him lassoed. He's definitely not giant, but he's decent. He's a fighter. And the brown ones are always cool, right? 
but I just switched up to the smaller size. Nice. The old Ketchco hunch. Think the guy wanted it? That's why it felt so heavy at first, I think. Sideways, I think that's important to take a look at. Sideways in his mouth. I've been throwing that longer style, that 110 length, that four and a half, five inch style, and I haven't got a bite. And then I switch up right away. This one eats the hunch. This little smaller, more compact bait right away. Sick, awesome fish, get her back in. As far as what tackle you use when you're throwing a jerk bait, I always throw mine on like a 610 to seven foot rod. I like a medium power rod with a moderate fast action. I always throw it on a graphite rod. A lot of guys want to throw it on a fiberglass rod because they're throwing it with treble hooks, a bait with treble hooks, but I like to have a little bit more sensitivity with that. So I'm using a seven foot or a six foot 10 uh, medium power, medium fast action. The slower action on that, so it's not a fast action, will let that rod load up quite a bit more with these treble hooks so you can keep that fish pinned. Um, but you also want a little bit of stiffness uh, and a little bit of fast tip on that because you're twitching the bait constantly. As far as a reel, I really, really like a six three to one gear ratio reel. That allows me, I'm not super fast, like an eight speed reel or something like that um, because I'm fishing this bait really slow, but I don't like a five speed reel either because I wanna be able to, to cover water and pick up line a lot of times when they hit on slack or on the end of a cast. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. You know, hopefully I taught you some things that'll help you get out in the water catch some more fish with a jerk bait this spring. Remember, look for that wind blowing directly into a bank, clean water, steeper banks, steeper cover, whatever it might be. Twitch this guy next to it, let it sit there in their face, and uh, yeah, I guess set the hook when they bite, obviously. Anyways, thanks so much for watching this one, guys. Please go subscribe to Carl's Mystery Tackle Box, and I will catch you very soon. I'm out of here, peace.